Hi, I'm Pastor Paul Marzon, the founding pastor here of Crossroads Church. Now you'll be watching this, you may be part of one of our campuses, you may be watching it at home, you may be part of a small group, or maybe you joined with a facilitator or a class. However you're studying tonight or today, I'd encourage you to turn to your team partnership book to road marker number three. Road marker number three talks about the characteristics of a team member beginning with time. In my introductory remarks, I talked about time is very important in terms of one of the markers of Crossroads Church. We talk about time with God individually, time in a small group, and then time in the larger body of Christ in worship. So if you turn to your section on road marker three, you see the first section is all about personal time with God. How you should read God's word, how you should spend time in prayer or solitude. And then this is the importance of the Lord's Prayer and kind of walking through that and what are some of the deeper meanings of that. We also have a section that talks about time in small group. One well, of the great things that small groups at Crossroads Church are not just a program or a class. We believe that small groups are the church. We believe that a small group is one of the most life-transforming things that you can participate in. And so as you read about time in a small group, we strongly encourage you, if you haven't already, to find a small group, a place where you can share your highs, your lows of the week, a place where you can study God's word and, and grow, a place where you can have other people care about you and, and minister to your needs, as well as a place where your group together can reach out into the world in meaningful ways to, to witness and, and share your faith. So this time in small group looks at the early church, particularly the Acts community, and it says that they gathered together at the temple courts and in their homes. Well, that's why we talk about the importance of both gathering in worship and the larger gathering, as well as in the homes and in the smaller gatherings. So I hope as you study that section, you'll see some of the principles of small groups here at Crossroads Church. I mentioned this once already, but we have several types of small groups. One are the ones around uh, fellowship. They're more fellowship-based, if you will. Um, one example that might be our softball team at church. We call that a no group or a fellowship group. The main reason to get together, play softball. But they also pray together before the meetings. They gather together and maybe uh, share a scripture, um, have conversations and care for one another and often do a great job of winning. That's what we like at Crossroads for their team. But they also have ones that are fellowship based as well. Um, like we have the Care to Craft group. The Care to Craft group, their main focus is to fellowship and do crafts. But they also do those main um, core things of prayer and highs and lows and other things. We also have um, what are called grow groups. Grow groups are groups that primarily are on discipleship. Many of our Sunday morning Bible studies that are at the church on campuses are kind of focused on really getting into the message or, or God's word in some way. We have a, a number of grow groups that are really like, we'll follow the message series and either watch them on video or talk about them in meaningful ways. Now, one of the things I mentioned is that even though they are focused on one thing like growing, they still do fellowship. We still encourage all small groups to have snacks or meals and to open up with highs and lows of sharing their week together. There are four major components of our small group program that is know, grow, care, and share. I've already mentioned about a no group or fellowship group, about grow groups or kind of discipleship groups or study groups. Now care groups are ones that are really where you're doing a ministry task. For example, our praise team gets together every Tuesday night and they come to rehearsal here. They lead music but they still share highs and lows. They still have a task which is to perform or lead worship if you will. But they're more than just performers. They're a team. They're people that gather together, lead worship together, but also kind of live life together. And then lastly, we talked about groups that are kind of share, missionary evangelism groups. There are many groups that kind of focus on that thing. They may be prayer groups. We have one group that comes, it's a recovery group, and they're really focused on how it is they can reach people that are struggling with alcohol or drugs. We have one group that gets together and they pray over all the prayer concerns of the church that come in. Things like this. But likewise, they still fellowship. Likewise, they still share highs and lows. They do all those same things. And so those four basic components, know, grow, care, and share, are interwoven through all our small groups, even if one group focuses on more on one um, more than another. You'll see the scriptures to read and some things to talk about. As part of small groups, we also mentioned just that whole thing of the importance of, we know that sometimes conflict will happen, whether it be in a small group setting or in the life of the church. So we have a section there that kind of references that idea of small groups sometimes have to resolve conflict and work through things. And we call it the Matthew 18 principle. And it's a way to kind of walk through that and talk about that and how to resolve um, positively ways when people go through difficulties. The last thing is time in the community of faith. You'll find that in the last section of time. And it talks about David worshiping God and about asking you, how do you personally benefit from worship? Now, as the pastor, 
Um, I really appreciate this feedback in this section. In fact, your facilitator or you can openly share with me exactly ways you feel that Crossroads is doing well, but also how we can improve. One of our core values is excellence, and we want to continue to make sure that worship honors God and inspires others. So as you study this section, think to yourself, why is worship meaningful to you? What are some of your favorite songs? How can we sing more of them? Or even if you were to pick Pastor Paul's next sermon, <laughs> our next sermon series, what would it be? All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed this section and just give me a few moments to pray for you and send you on your way to begin to think, reflect, and study God's Word. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, I thank you so much for this opportunity for each of us to read your Word and to talk about time with you, whether it be time with you individually, time with you in a small group, or time with you in the larger body of Christ through worship. Lord, I just pray that people think about how are they spending their time. When we think about the moments of the day, the seconds ticking away, we think about the, the time we have in terms of how we prioritize it. You tell us especially about time with you. And if we look at the early disciples, we say where they raised, or where they would get up early in the morning and upon arising, study your word, pray with you, spend time with you. Jesus modeled that so well. We see where the early disciples gathered in the homes and, and prayed for one another, supported one another. We see where they went to worship and, and spent time with you in Sabbath. And so Lord, give us the the understanding of this emotionally, spiritually, and intellectually, but also give us the practice of doing it, the spiritual discipline, if you will, to continue to commit our time to you, one of the greatest assets we have, so that we can draw closer to you and closer to others. We pray for this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.